Hello friends, a very warm welcome. This is Ishan on behalf of Edureka. I hope all of you are doing good. So today we will be exploring what are arrays in Java. So let's see what we got for the day. So we'll have arrays in Java. What are the different types of arrays? How we'll work with them? We'll try to solve a basic problem by having a matrix. Then what are sorting techniques and searching techniques in arrays so this is supposed to be the agenda so guys let's begin with the arrays now in the software design so you are storing the data so when you are storing the data there might be a use case we need to store a lot of data all together in a single container right for example you need to store population of a country as in some states so there are let's say n number of states for which we have a population count so you see there will be approximately data which would be in lot of values so we'll have more than one value associated to the container called population for the country so we can have an array for every element in an array we can mention the population count for one of the states right so to begin with guys array is a data structure to hold you know more than one values so it's gonna be a multi-value container for us so it can contain homogeneous elements so you can say it's a limitation or it's a plus point right so it maintains the type safety check so we cannot store different type of data in the same array so it has to be the same type so if you are going to create an array for integers it must be only integers now all the elements they are stored under one single variable name so we have a reference variable which will be pointing to the array now the data stored in an array is a contiguous memory location it means that they are the neighbors now so there are various different types by which we can represent the data in arrays so we can represent the data as single dimensional or 1d array which is storing the elements as in a row so just consider it as a row in a continuous row we are storing the elements so that is how we started right so in a use case to store the country's population so this element can store state one population count next element can store the other state population count so on and so forth now two dimensional array is array of arrays right so it's a collection of collection now so here what we are understanding two dimensional array that it's gonna hold the population for the world let's say the first array will store the population for indian states the second array can hold the population for some other countries different states so if you have more than these kind of problems so where you have data coming up in the form of some let's say you want to process images right you want to rotate an image you want to process an image on some colors so here we just don't have a two dimension array we just don't have array of arrays so we got multi dimensional arrays so in that regard we got this multi dimensional arrays where lot of data can be stored so typically when you are going to come up with the image processing problem so you will be working in the multi dimensional array so one of the use cases now let's see how we can work with arrays so guys how we can create a 1d array so creating a 1d array is very basic so you give a reference variable name and you mention the data type with the new operator with the size and you'll be able to get your array created in the ram area so reference variable with the new integer 5 will give you an array of five integers right so you need to be having this syntax where we can create an array now when you will create an array it will be indexed on the basis of size let's say the size is 5 so there will be four indexes so 0 to n minus 1 so it's gonna be 0 to 4 for a size of 5 now every element in an array is accessible through this index for example when you say my array 0 assign 10 you are writing the data in the 0th index so thereafter you say 1 is 20, 2 is 30, 3 is 40, 4 is 50. So you are actually writing the data into the array. So a basic write operation and same way when you have the array constructed. So at the time of construction, you can mention the data, right? So the values can be given exactly at the time of construction. So this time you need not to write the data. 
so by default we'll have the values coming in for your array so guys when we want to access any element in an array so you write down the reference variable name and you mention the index in a square bracket and you will be able to access it for example you say my array 1 it's gonna access the value 20. so you say my array 4 right so array 4 over here is supposed to be the value 50. so when you want to update something so you can just mention the index and you can give a new value so here it goes like my array 4 assign 100 so you are going to replace your array 4 as 100. so let's have a quick practical example on 1d arrays so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create a new java project so let's say a new java project called array demo so we'll begin with uh, why we need arrays and thereafter we'll process it further right so i'm gonna say arrays with the main method or let's say 1d arrays the package goes like co.edureka now consider you wanna store the population of a country right so you will have state one let's say the population count is 502 same way you will have some other states coming in let's say state two state three state four and state five Right, so let us see some populations are coming in for us. Now having this population stored in five different single value containers, right? So what are they? They are single value containers. They cannot hold more than one value. So when I'm talking about state one, state two, state three, state four and state five, they are the different states, right? Containing the population. So I can say state one population count to be more precise right so considering that these are the different population counts for the different states of a country so rather than containing these single value containers what is a solution is to have a multi value container right so how you create a multi value container so we'll write one integer array so i'll say population i'll just write down this name as state population which goes like a new integer with five elements right so i gave the size myself that this array should have five elements so when you print out this state population when you run this code here so you will see that we are getting some hash code in a hexadecimal format it says some integer array at the 785e922 so what exactly has happened here so guys in the ram area so whenever you're gonna run the program so in this ram structure so you'll have this stack coming in as a data structure and the second thing is heap for us so i'll just quickly write so this is ram allocated this is the stack data structure this is the heap data structure now we got this guy called population so if you see this state population so i'll not use the term state population rather i'll say country population so this guy contains 785 e922 right so country population is containing some hexadecimal over here 7852E922. So it can be any number which is coming for us over here because it is not generated by us. Now, in the heap area, there will be a storage container which will be created at the same hex code. Right. So this is key value pair. I mean to say it's like hashing as an algorithm. So this guy acts as a key where this is the storage container. So we got these indexes coming in for your array, right? So that's like zero index, one index, two index, three index, and the fourth index. And by default, we get the data as zeros, right? So we have all the data coming in as zeros. So we have everything over here as zero, and this guy, country population, is basically pointing out here. Now, Coming here, I will first of all read the element in array. 
the first thing is reading the element in array so what i'll do i'll simply say please print me the country population zeroth element so when i'll say zeroth element so here we are with the zeroth element right so when you run this code you get to see that the value is zero so same way if i read it for the first element so you will see it's gonna give me again zero right so this is like reading the element and it's like read single element so you access the element right so there can be the other way around that's like read all so i can just put up a for loop i can say start with zero go till country population dot length so length will give me the size of the array so what i will do is i will say ciso country population of i is plus country population i so where each and every index will represent a state okay so now when you run this code here you get to see all the values coming in as zero so when you create any array so all the elements will be by default zero so what i can do is so before i access my array i can do a write operation in array right so write operation so write slash update operation so both of them are same for us so i can come here and say that the country population of zero index is 502 same way we have one then the two then the three then the four so you got seven six five nine eight seven four five six and eight seven six so we are able to write the data and now i'm just gonna do an empty line here and we'll say rereading after write operation so when you run this code here so what you see is once we do a reread operation after writing the content in the array so we see the updated data right so now we have these values coming in 5027659874567876 and 876 it means that here we don't have zeros now right so rather than zero so you got the data coming in for us for example this guy will go as 502 now every index represents a state with the population count right so having single value containers differently so we were having single value containers differently rather than having it in in an array is a more better version now the same syntax over here can be replaced like this so i can say int array country population goes like this number 502,765987456 and 876 so what does this mean this means that so here by default all the elements were zero right so in this declaration when we read so all elements were by default zero but here elements have some default initial value so here elements they have a default initial value so even you don't write the data so let's say we are not writing the data here so when you try to read it so you'll always have the data in the array now right so we're not performing rather any write operation so what you will see is that you have the data coming in before you even do a write operation so choice is yours so whatever the way you want to write an array you can do that so you can have an array with all the elements having default value as zero or you just specify the values whatever you want to provide so the same syntax can come up like this as well all right so don't get confused it's the same story right so this is an implicit way versus this is an explicit way so choice is yours right so any syntax you want to follow you can follow that so now the next thing is uh, update operation so you already have the data so you can use the same assignment operator to update the data right so let's see this update operation coming into the picture so now when you run the code so before you had this data and now you are having this data so guys i hope this is clear to everyone right 
so re reading after the right operation so now this right operation has become the update operation so we can use 1d array any time with the help of indexes we can perform a read operation on a single element we can perform read on all the elements we can even perform a write or update operation but everything happens with the help of indexing right so there is one more way to read the array in java so that's like your enhanced for loop or sometimes we call it as for each loop so any name can be given to this guy so you say for int any element in your country population array you say print me the element so you run the code here so you get to see the data once again so here you don't have indexes this loop will start from the zeroth index will copy the element at zeroth index into this variable elm which can be any name of your choice right so it's just an identifier so we are iterating in this loop so now you seriously want to come up and calculate the population for this country so i can create a variable called count which goes like zero and here i can say count plus assign or let it be simpler count is count plus the element right and let me come here and say population count for entire country is plus the count so let's run this code here and what you see is the population count coming in now you might be surprised in a way that this was a bit easier approach storing the values in a single value container and uh, having state one population count so why we are messing around with these indexes even though this looks very easy now assuming that you have to work on 30 states so you'll be doing one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six it's like a lot of time consuming thing as in development effort is highly reduced so having this one liner where you just mention all the population counts and having a loop as a couple of lines and summing up the entire population so when data is having more dimensions so you need to focus on array right so solving the problems where you have a lot of data so you structure it in a better way and arrays they are one of the most easiest data structures to use in your software solutions so with this let's now move to the next part so the next part is working with two dimensional arrays right so guys we call them array of arrays right so here we mention the row and column so row column here does not literally means a matrix concept so row column over here means that how many number of 1d arrays you want so the first element means how many 1d arrays and the second means how many elements in 1d array right so it's basically array of arrays we can represent a matrix using uh, two dimensional arrays so this is like zeroth arrays zeroth element zeroth arrays first element same way first array is zero element first array is first element so if you want to access you can say zero zero is hundred so zero array is zero element right so you put the data so same way you can put the data for the other elements now if you want you can access any element in a 2d array by mentioning its indexes and if you want to update the data it's again on the basis of indexing right so guys let us try to have one example on 2d arrays so i'm gonna write one new class let's say 2d arrays with the main method so to begin with i'll just say in two brackets i'm gonna say world population so considering this world population so i'm going to have the first array for the first country right so let's say all right now this is first array and let it be the second one so this goes like some second array and this goes like some third array right so this is zeroth index this is first index and this is second index 
now when we are understanding this problem statement so we mean to say that zero represents country one and one represents some country two so just just taking an example so this represents some country three same way here this is country one's zero country one's one then two then three then four and five and six so this is zero state first state so these are the states now which we are talking about guys right states for country one so these are the states for country one right as in uh, indexing so the next is the state for the country two states for the country three so these are all counts right so they are the population counts all right so let's say that you got country one as india and let's say the zeroth state is punjab so we got the population count for punjab so that is how we are representing it so there can be some other country two there can be some other country three so we have represented the data into this entire array now when i will just try to say world population is plus world population and uh, size is plus world population dot length or let's say and length is now when i will run this code here as java application so what you will see is that it's an array of arrays at a hash code right and the length is three so i got this guy called world population so i'm just gonna take this another example here so we got this guy as world population 785e2922 some hash code so this world population is something like this so it's basically having three indexes and you got indexes coming as two one and zero right so this hash code goes like this and we got a reference coming in here now the next thing is we got the zero one and two we got this world population coming in now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna access the zeroth index right so i'll say world population zero then one and then two right so we will come up here and say zero one and two so guys this is array of arrays right so zeroth index is an array first index is an array and second index is also an array so i'm going to say print me the zeros length print me first length and print me the second length so zero length is like what seven right because there are seven elements then the next guy and the next guy they have their own sizes so when you run this program here so you get to see the sizes as seven five and six at the same time what you see is we got different different references coming in some 42 705 c6 so we have some you know hash codes so i'm just gonna represent these hash codes here let's say some 4001 let's say some 3001 let's say some 2001 so i'm just considering these numbers as hash codes so further we got these arrays so this is like 4001 array 3001 and 2000 so guys i'm just considering these mathematical numbers as hash codes right so this is like further pointing out here this guy pointing out here and this guy pointing out here so what is this concept this concept is array of arrays so world's population zeroth index is an array right so we get to see this data over here so this data is available over here right so as in indexes so zero index right so this guy is indexed for us so zero index one index two index then three then four then five and then six so on and so forth guys the others as well so if you say world population zeroth arrays first element it's gonna be four five six seven so that is how if i come here and if i say 
प्लीज प्रिंट मी वर्ल्ड पॉपुलेशन लेट से जीरोथ अरेज जीरोथ एलिमेंट राइट सो वर्ल्ड पॉपुलेशन जीरो जीरो यू रन दिस कोड एयर एंड वॉट यू गेट टू सी इज वन टू थ्री फोर so guys i hope you understood this point right so when i say 1 and 2 so first array is zeroth index first index and the second index that's like 8 7 6 5 you are right so this is like 1 and 2 so any time you want to read the array so this is like read single element right so you want to write the data so write or update they work in the same way right So for example now i will be doing an update operation so i'll say world population of 1 and 2 uh, is some number all sevens so you say see so re reading and now when i will do a re read operation here so let's run this code so here you are with the number all sevens so same way you can even perform a read all operation so i can write a loop so the outer loop shall work for the world population dot length so this loops gonna iterate three times because the length is 3 so from 0 to 2 because we got three 1d arrays then i got an inner loop which will go from let's say j as in 0 we will say j less than world population of i dot length and j plus plus right and thereafter i'm going to say world population of ith arrays jth index right the print line and print line will do in the uh, next case so let me give one empty line here so here you are so now you are able to print the entire 2d array so guys array of arrays they can be powerful data structures when you have lot of data so you can even create an array of arrays by saying an arr is a new integer so i want 3 1d arrays with five elements each right so 3 1d arrays with five elements each so here if you will try to read this guy so if you try to read arr So any guesses, guys? What will be the output when you read ARR? So what do you think? What will be the output for the ARR, right? So output for the ARR would be all zeros, right? So when you give the sizes, you get the default values as zero, and when you don't give the sizes, you give the default values. So it's just the basic conclusion to understand the arrays, right? So giving sizes, we need to put the data later. hence data initially would be zero so this is how we are understanding this guy array right so giving data first we need not to give any size so that's like the thumb rule and guys explore enhanced for loop on 2d arrays right So explore that how you can convert this nested for loop with the help of enhanced for loop, right? So that you guys explore. So this is how we got something known as two-dimensional arrays. And let me do one more problem statement. So how we can solve this matrices problem? So if you can recall your childhood mathematics, so we used to do an addition, subtraction, multiplication, and lot of other things on arrays or on matrices. so we'll write one small program here and we'll try to solve it as an addition problem right so let's let's perform an operation on array once again so let's take a problem statement here to add two arrays so i'll write one 2d array called a which goes like the first array having 1 1 and 1 so i'll have all the values as ones right so same way i'm going to have the other guy called b so this array b i'm going to have the values as twos so it's a three cross three matrix representation three rows and three columns three rows and three columns so when i have this matrix representation coming in so what i'm going to do is i'm going to print them first right so let's see matrix a 
so i'll say for int go with the zero go less than a dot length and uh, then i'll write one more for loop so we got this 2d array so we need to access the elements so you need to come up with a of i dot length and j plus plus so here i'm going to print this guy called a of i and j so this is the representation for matrix a let's represent the matrix b so i'll say b dot length b of i and b of ij so let's run the code here so this is how the two different matrices are coming guys right now what i'll do is i'll come here and i'll create one another matrix that's like c which is a new integer of three and three right so we'll take three rows three columns and uh, what i'll do is i'll take one loop here run it till c's length and i'll say c of ij is a of ij so guys we are adding the elements here right and b of ij so what we are doing is we are adding this one with this two then this one with this two so on and so forth right and once i'm done with it so i'll represent this guy called matrix c here after the addition so all elements they should come up as c so you run the code here so you get to see that the matrix three is coming as all the threes so here we are so one basic mathematical operation on matrices guys right so arrays they can solve a lot of problems for us right and this is what we got as in the part one so in our next part we shall be discussing on what is sorting and searching in arrays so that would be all from my side guys thank you so very much once again this is ishan on behalf of edureka and do like our facebook page and do subscribe to our youtube channels in case you have enjoyed the videos thank you guys I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!